Hey, it's Jonathan. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this video finds you in good fortune. Uh, today I want to talk about, uh, we've, I'm, really not, I'm not going to really do a project analysis. I want to talk about um, DeFi and um, DAOs, Decentral, Decentralized Autonomous uh, Organizations. I'm going to give a br brief overview of um, what they are. I'm also going to share some of my thoughts about where I think things are going to go, uh, what decentralized truly means, uh, and uh, just some of my thoughts, some some of the ways that I hope it goes, and what I'd like to see for the future. Uh, so if this interests you, hey, stay tuned, and uh, we're going to also do some technical analysis and some fundamental analysis in this video as well. Uh, I will timestamp. Uh, down in the description so that you can hop to the fundamental or te technical analysis if you like and, um, and that's that uh, look our last giveaway on Twitter the um, it was this uh, skull this my beautiful skull by art by Nora uh, there was something wrong with the metadata and the uh, NFTs were unable to be uh, minted if you previously tried to mint uh, NFT and were and was unsuccessful, then you should be able to go back now and mint an NFT. Again, there's only going to be uh, uh, ten of those in existence. Um, we we just had you know it's kind of a practice run for us. And uh, she sold the uh, oil painting and you know she's she's trying to pull it together. She sold the oil painting and the oil painting got destroyed and and then the NFTs wouldn't mint. So hey, I mean that's how it is, right? But uh, so that one's not even going to have a oil painting with it. So those are going to be um, that's going to be the FUD run, right? So if you want a FUD run NFT, you like the way that one looks, you like to have one. Um, there's only um, there's only eight of them left right now. We've already given the one away that we gave away, uh, we were going to give away on Twitter. So there's actually we need to update that. But there's only eight of them now. And um, it, look, keep an eye out for the next giveaway as well because uh, she's going to do a next giveaway probably next week. Uh, it's looking at uh, we're going to see how things go, but. There's a FUD run NFT, eight of them left. If you want one, should have a link down in the description, um, or you can visit the website and check that out. So anyway, okay, look, uh, let's talk about DeFi, all right? Um, well, actually, let's talk about a uh, decentralized autonomous organization to start with. Um, I'm going to read what this is, and then I'm going to give you some of my... Uh, my thoughts on it. The Decentralized Autonomous Organization, DAO, sometimes called a Decentralized Autonomous Corporation, DAC, is an organization constructed by rules encoded encoded as computer program that is often uh, transparent, controlled, transparent controlled by the organization members and not influenced by a central government. The general term DAO are DAOs are member-owned uh, communities without centralized leadership. So, uh, you know, with the advent of the blockchain, what has happened is um, you can spin up a smart contract now. It's completely decentralized, uh, and you can create an organization or, um, or a corporation that's completely decentralized where the uh, people that participate in that corporation, um, the members of that corporation, have a vote, and then that vote is executed by a decentralized contract. Uh, so it's completely trustless. There's not a person in, uh, in charge of it that's executing or interpreting and then executing the wishes of the community, but it's done by a uh, smart contract and predefined code. Uh, this is going to open up the uh, this is going to open up the possibilities for all different kinds of things. You know, if you think about it, um, in here in America, it was government for the people by the people, and that's actually kind of what uh, now we have voted in representatives to represent our wishes and and things like that. But it was supposed to be the original intent was uh, representation. Um, uh, it was, you know, the government was supposed to be for the people, by the people. 
<clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about. Um, let's see. I'm going to touch on uh, decentralized finance here. Finance here, and then I'm going to go into. Um, I'm going to go into um, identities and how the decentralized uh, autonomous organization might roll into our identities, and then the uh, you know kind of what uh, China's doing with their identity solution, and where everybody gets a score. There's a scoring system. I want to touch on that. Um, it's going to be real interesting. Going to be very interesting. So, uh, decentralized finance is basically um, a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, um, where the community comes together, they either offer funds or they borrow funds. Uh, you can do a number of things. Um, a decentralized finance, DeFi, offers financial instruments without relying on intermediate intermediaries such as brokers, brokerages, exchanges, or banks by using smart contracts. So everything, again, is rolled into that smart contract, and the smart contract executes it. Um, uh, on the blockchain, DeFi platforms allow people to lend, borrow funds from others, speculate on price, price movements on assets using derivatives, uh, trade cryptocurrency, Currencies, you know, so basically all of the functions that your exchange or your bank can offer you, um, you know, applying for loans, uh, borrowing, and lending, uh, you can lend your own uh, assets out. Um, DeFi does that in a completely trustless manner. What I mean by trustless, if you're not familiar with that word, is that you don't have to have a third party in the, you know, um, the head of the bank or in the representatives of the bank. You don't have to have a third party uh, that you trust to complete your wishes. It's done automatically, automated by a smart contract. Uh, you know, when you listen to, um, when you, you know, I hear people talk all the time and they're like, oh, um, you know, China and their policies about, um, you know, their, basically their credit score and their social score, scoring system, um, you know, that's the big uh, uh, drawback and the main people that uh, make people afraid about um, electronic systems coming in. But your greatest, you know, I found in life, your greatest, just like when the stock market goes down, your greatest uh, uh, point of chaos is actually, that could be chaos, is your greatest point of, um, uh, of uh, opportunity as well. So uh, the cryptocurrency can do one of two things. We can we can bring in a system where uh, things are centralized, where this system comes in. There's a credit score, a credit rating, and it's it's to keeping track of everybody's information and is controlled by one person, right? Um, and this is kind of like the you know the China and this controlled by the government. Or we can bring in a system, still have a credit score, right? But it's decentralized, all right, and it's going to be one way or the other. In fact, it already is uh, this way. It there is no other solution. You have uh, you have credit scores. You go to the bank to um, you go to the bank to borrow some money. You have a credit score. You already have things tracking all of your movements and uh, keeping a score on you. Uh, you already have these systems of scoring your ability. You go to school, your ability is scored. You go to work, your job, uh, your job performance is kept track of. Uh, you know, we already have all these uh, systems that are already scoring our ability. Uh, in the in the more and you know even now. Uh, the, all of this is going into databases. You know, if you smoke, your insurance is going up. What kind of driver are you? Uh, you know, there's all these all these different um, things that are already keeping record and already keeping a score on uh, how we perform. Um, in the workplace, there's a you know the your your boss keeps a score on you. You're rewarded if you have a, a better score. You know, if you don't. Uh, if you don't show up late and you uh, don't take a lot of days out from work, you don't call out a lot. Uh, these are these things are already being kept uh, on us. Now, uh, so we're in this system anyway. This is the way this is the way it is, and this is the way it's going to be. Um, so we don't need to pretend like that it's going to be any other way. There's already a scoring system.
Uh, now, if it's centralized and the government, you know, can uh, shut your money off and all that kind of stuff, well, they actually already can. Um, you, you've seen recently what our government did to uh, Russia. Now, originally in America here, it was supposed to be government. It was supposed to be government by the people for the people, and um, and this was this was the original tent. This was the way it was set up. Now it was also set up so that. Um, you know, the separate states, before everything was federalized, the separate states uh, printed their own money. And this goes into, and, uh, you know, this goes into, and I, I know America, the policies are, are, are pretty rough against cryptocurrency, but um, the system that I see, that, um, that I would like to see, you know, uh, come in, we'll see what happens, but the money system needs to be decentralized and this isn't something that I've ever heard anybody talk about um, but just as you have a credit score right you should have a token everybody should have their own individual token right and the outside what the worth is put on it from the uh, outside it's decentralized true finance true decentralization money is at the core of everything and true decentralization must start with money. Um, and it's not it's not enough to say, uh, okay, well, we're going to have this one stable coin um, and it's going to be decentralized. Well, that's not true decentralization. True decentralization is when we can print our own money. When there's not one individual, one centralized source that is the root of the money, but the individual, each of us, can print our own money. Uh, we already do this throughout our life. We print our own money by educating ourselves and becoming successful. We're printing, our, you know, our time is our money. We're printing money with our time. Uh, we print money by uh, being skilled in a trade. We get paid for that. That's that's how it's a way of printing money, right? Um, but this this system of decentralization, if we really were truly decentralized, then we would each physically have a coin, and to our own ability to make that coin worth something in our lives would be uh, decentralized, and you would have a ability to print your own coin if you wanted to, as opposed to this centralized system that creates booms and bust. Uh, the ability to print your own money, each individual print their own money and uh, regulate the price of that, whether they were in, under in inflation or, um, you know, in a deflationary uh, aspect. Now, this is possible. This might say, sound far-fetched, but this is possible if you have a... Um, a currency that it can be traded with with only with a limited number of supply like Bitcoin for instance or uh, Cardano ever you know everybody knows I'm big on Cardano um, you know for Bitcoin or Cardano um, this would give relevance to how much worth you've brought to your own coin uh, and this would be truly de decentralized when and if you look at the policy, the policies that are being made, and uh, you know, ever them talking about securities, or uh, you know, our go my my government, our government, the U.S. government talking about securities, or whether the cryptocurrency is a commodity or a security, um, uh, this you know, the whole system is to, is set up to uh, to protect the ability to print money. Right, and, and that's why the that's why the U.S. government is is doing what they're doing is because uh, in the past we've had the reserve currency of the world because it's been based off petroleum, and the Federal Reserve has the ability to issue money and to um, and to uh, withdraw money, you know, to create to create the liquidity in the market, and this is how uh, you know that's why they're saying, oh, we're in recession or we're in inflation, and they they do this by adding liquidity to the market or pulling it back. Um, well, true decentralization is when the individual has the ability to do that, and they can put their own coin out and say, uh, this is what I offer. Uh, this is what I offer, and um, invest in this. 
uh, I see I see systems where uh, they could be completely decentralized, where the system, the payment system, would be uh, set up to invest in that person's coin, um, and. Uh, this would really truly this would create a system if you had a stable base of it um, like say a um, a base with a limited supply the whole problem is the ability to print money on a large scale when governments have the ability you know we say that um, we say that we have the uh, you know we're talking about decentralization well, you'll never be decentralized as long as a system, a broad system, has the ability to print endless money. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a, uh, if you have a, um, if you have like a Bitcoin, right? If there is a government that is able to print as much money as they want, then the system is able to be manipulated. Uh, now, if and that that's because uh, the money is not decentralized. You know, we are we're actually of the country that we use the money of. Uh, that's really that's really who you know. We are part of the country. All the laws and everything are they bind us to the laws of that country by through the money system is what is really what is really happening. Um, but if an individual was able to uh, mint their own coin and produce their own money, and then because of their the Perceived worth by the um, uh, by the community in general. You know, this person is a scientist, and this is a perceived worth. Um, uh, this person is an artist. This person is that. Then the um, others uh, purchase that, purchase their coin, and then turn it into a limited a coin limited like Cardano with a cap on it or Bitcoin. Um, then uh, this would bring balance to the system and we wouldn't end up with these, uh, you know, individuals could overinflate their coin, individuals could uh, deflate their coin, uh, and, and things of this nature, but you would not see this on a large scale. It would bring balance to the system. And I believe this is truly, in, in my estimation, this would actually be true decentralization when everybody was able to print their own coin, put it out to the community, and, uh, and worth would be uh, given to that currency by, uh, by the community, by what they added to the community. Um, those are just my thoughts on uh, decentralization, and uh, just trying to look forward a little bit there. The uh, but basically, um, a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. It's an organization that runs itself by the vote of a community. And decentralized finance basically does away with your banks. And it, there's all different kinds of decentralization branches that connect to this. Um, Anything you can imagine is going to be automated um, in the future. And uh, anyway, that's just my thoughts. All right, so let's go over here and uh, look at some fundamental analysis. See what's been going on with the uh, the Fed. This is the real news right here. Um, if you want to uh, know what's going on in the world, this is the real news. Uh, a lot of stuff you see on the news, news, so-called news is is not real. This is the real news right here. So uh, we're just going to do a brief overview. I'm not going to explain a lot of this stuff, but I'm just going to do touch basis on it. Uh, looking back over the last week and what we need to look for uh, coming up the next week. Uh, looking over the last week, we had our core retail sales. Now, uh, cryptocurrency is a risk risk asset, and uh, it, what's it, you know things like um, these important things are core retail sales. These are the main reports last week. Um, you did have meeting uh, the Fed uh, meeting minutes come out, um, but when you if you're looking at this, this is uh, Forex Factory. This is just a Forex uh, calendar, and when you're looking at um, at this stuff, you'll see here it says actual is great, actual greater than forecast is good for the currency. Well, when the you know I'm in the U.S., so uh, this is I'm looking at the U.S. dollar. When the U.S. dollar moves up, then uh, Bitcoin's going to move down, right? Just by comparison. Uh, now this isn't always the case, but um, we can say that this would probably be likely, especially when um, the um, Fed is so hawkish on raising interest rates and um, trying to bring uh, inflation back into control. 
then these are the things that they're going to want to bring back into control. They're going to want to suppress. They actually need the core retail sales to um, to decrease, right? Because um, they they want to limit the buying uh, power so that the prices will come back into control. So as long as these are going up, then um, it's still not great, but um, these, this, what I'm watching is, you know, you see like actual, uh, the forecast, right? So you have the forecast was negative uh, 0.1. Um, the actual was uh, 0.4. So this is better than the forecast. Forecast. Now it is, uh, it's less than the previous, but it's better than forecast. So this is kind of like a mixed signal. Um, we want this number to we want this number to come down really for cryptocurrency in my opinion the negative point uh, one would have been uh, better than the point four so than the positive point four okay and the um, the other thing is the uh, the meeting minutes that was interesting so we want to be looking at that stuff next week what we want to look at is on the 26 we have the uh, next uh, uh, Fed Chair Powell speaks. This is really what we want to look at next week. We want to, uh, if you know, whether he's hawkish or dovish, um, you know, whether they're going to continue to raise interest rates. Uh, then that's what we're really going to look at. I'm going to look at all of these reports. Uh, going up to that. I, I want to see stuff that is negative for the economy because there we need the, the economy needs to shrink. You know, last uh, last week, let's look at this. Another thing is these uh, the unemployment claims last week. Now this isn't supposedly this isn't one of the most important reports, but the unemployment claims uh, last week, I want to see this number going up. Um, so that we'll see it, that's going to signal a bottom to me uh, when this number, when the unemployment starts going up. The more people that are employed, the more money that's being circulated in the economy, the more the infl inflation is going to uh, take place. And uh, so we need to bring that unemployment, we need to bring the unemployment number up so that um, less money will be circulating in the economy, which will create less inflation. Okay, so we need the economy to constrict. Um, we actually had less unemployment claims than we did the prior, um, than prior, unless it was adjusted. So we want to see unemployment claims going up. We want to see uh, retail sales going down, and that will signal to me that interest rates will eventually go down when unemployment goes up and and, uh, and uh, retail sales and things like that go down. So, but our eye is just really next week on the 26 on the um, uh, 26 uh, the uh, speaking. Uh, of uh, Chair Powell speaking, so that's what we're going to watch and just see what he how he sets the tone to it. Uh, you know, in these times, we can expect things like uh, re bad reports come out, which create you know hawkishness, a sell off, and then him come back and smooth it over with some kind words, you know, to stabilize the market. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some technical analysis here, and. Um, if you've been following along uh, for a while, all the way back in January, we were talking about how this is our area of capitulation, um, and uh, we were able to hold that area, and then we had a move up. This is, was our second area of capitulation, around 37. Um, we had a bounce off of that, and then we eventually ended up with our top. As we move higher, as the price moves uh, moves up, our area of capitulation usually uh, moves up with our price. The closer the area of capitulation is to where the market is sitting, the uh, is a higher, greater indication that we're going to have a, um, a return movement in price, have a retracement or a change of trend. So you see, we followed this. Um, we followed this here. 
Um, what I'm looking at now is I have my eye on the uh, 10,000 area as our next level of um, next level of capitulation, which is right here. And I honestly believe that you know no one knows where the market's going to go, right? But I for a buy-in point. You know, I'm going to I'm going to dollar cost average back into this thing. You make your money when the market's going down, not when it's going up. Um, you know, you it, it's when you buy low that's when you're going to make your money. You've got to have this order of order of um, the cycle of order and chaos, right? To uh, to move the market and, and uh, make money. This is how it works. It's a cycle of order and chaos. So. Chaos would definitely look at this 4,3500 mark um, is actually my ultimate uh, target for a um, firm buy-in position, but I'm going to be dollar cost averaging a little bit as we go down. Um, I'm going to, you know, evaluate it on every step of the way. As for right now, you see we've had this um, this retracement. We are sitting on a lower time frame. We're sitting right here in the air, in our area of capitulation. I don't think we're going to fall out from here. It looked like we were going to fall out. I don't believe that that's what's going to happen. Now we're going to have to see what goes on um, with the Fed on the 26th and uh, whether they're hawkish or dovish and that will give us more indication of um, where the market's going to go. But just to put some drawings on the chart so that I'll have a picture in my head what I expect and then I can see where the market deviates off of that. Um, our, I'm looking at this 29 area as a target from right where we're at. Um, this did not um, this did not uh, bleed off the cliff. This has not fallen off the cliff cliff yet. As long the longer it stays here, the more bullish I become that um, that what I'm thinking is going to be is going to play out. I think that we're probably going to have a uh, rally up to the 29 area, and then we're going to have a sell off back down to the uh, 10,000 area. Now you know the market. Nobody knows what the market is going to do. It doesn't move in straight lines. I think at that point we will have a rally back up to right around the um, where we're sitting right now, the 21, with a bleed off, which goes down to which goes down to that uh, 3,000 range. And uh, this is this is just what I'm looking at. This is what I, um, I'm anticipating. Now, like I said, I'm going to see how the market diverges from what I'm anticipating, but this gives me a uh, something to a rule or two to compare to what the market actually does to see um, see what my uh, reevaluate the market. It helps, to, helps me at least to have a picture in my head what I think that is probably going to do. And I think that this is, this is probably, you know, this is what I'm planning on it doing right now. Um, on the 26th, we might be a little dovish. That would be enough to give us that boost back up to our 29 region, and then I believe I believe we'll have a quick sell off from there. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's go check a lower time frame. See what this looks like on a lower time frame. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so you see we have a ascending channel on our uh, relative strength right here. You see we have an ascending channel on that. We also have a um, we also have a divergence. So uh, the relative strength is moving up. The price is moving lower. Price came down equal, uh, equal to what the previous low relative strength moved even higher, and now the relative strength and the price are finding unison. So I imagine that this is probably going to have a little bit of a horizontal retracement back out to this relative strength ascending channel here, and then uh, we will uh, start to move up from there. Although this could, um, we could have if this breaks at this ascending relative strength uh, line then I think we'll probably move down. If we have another divergence, then we may have a bounce off of that. If not, then it's probably likely that we're going to bleed right through and find a new low on this. But I am anticipating that um, 
that uh, 29 area is what I'm anticipating off of this. I think this is probably going to find traction, but you know we'll, we'll just play it as it goes. Okay, we're going to play it as it goes. But this is, you know, this looks like uh, this could be a double bottom to me. That may take us up to that uh, 29 area. especially since it hasn't fallen through the area of capitulation. So we had a break of our um, a break of our ascending relative strength line. And the uh, if you've been watching any time, then usually when we have that break, that's when I, I put in a clause, which is uh, if we can stay above our area of capitulation, which is this on which is right here on this move where we're sitting, if we can stay above our area of capitulation, uh, before, if we stay, if we can get to the relative strength, can make it back to oversold before we break the area of capitulation, then we're going to see more upside, and that upside is probably going to look like this. In in my estimation, I think that upside is going to come back up, hit the lower side of that relative strength, and then then we'll see that. I think we're going to see something like this. I see a bounce back up, hit the lower side of that ascending relative strength and then then we'll have our sell off and uh, with a correlation uh, price of 29 so this is what I'm looking at whether it happens or not we will see um, we'll see what happens but this gives me something again to compare off of let's go up to a higher time frame real quick while we're here and just take a look at um, Bitcoin in a higher time frame All right, so you see, I mean, we've been we've been holding this ascending uh, channel here. I thought we were initially going to receive a bounce off of this uh, this lower channel, although we are not um, we are not we you know we've fallen through it at this point. Again, this is just a confirmation of um, of what I was saying before. Our move back up would be. You know, back up to the uh, right around that 29 area. That would be uh, moving back up. How you know when something breaks a channel, it usually tries to move back up to it, um, and then eventually uh, our fall off. My targets are. Let's see. Did I put my targets on this uh, daily chart? My targets are that 10,000 region and then the 3,000 region. Right, so uh, move up towards you know trying to bring back equilibrium to the bottom of our channel, a uh, 10,000 region, and then uh, the 3,000 region is where I'm looking, um, looking at uh, getting all back in, quite possibly depending on what the market looks like. Uh, you know we'll see how it goes. Now at that point. We would. We've been on this. We've been kind of carrying this. Um, we've been kind of carrying this uh, relative strength uh, bottom here. I mean, we've been staying in the pretty much overbought um, scenario. This would be a. This is. This will be a resetting. Um, this will be a resetting uh, retracement in this bear market, um, and the then I will be looking to play something as I watch the bottom. I'll be looking to play something like this, and when it comes back up, uh, when we eventually go back into the bull market, finding resistance at that lower um, level of the um, lower level of this channel in our relative strength. Is what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, you also ha have the danger of forming a head and shoulder pattern right here too. So that's looking way out. You know, I mean, we're talking, you know, it could be a year out from there. But um, that's what I have in the picture in my head that I'm going to uh, compare things off right at this point. But we're going to watch it real closely. Okay, look, you all are, um, you know, check out our blockchain friends, right? Uh, I'm making a video that we're posting one video every single month describing all, you know, what our blockchain friends are doing. That'll be tagged at the end of this video. So if you're interested in any of our blockchain friends, um, actually, I haven't made it yet. So we'll hold off on that. I'm going to do start doing that the uh, beginning of next month. 
but do check our blockchain friends, Cardano uh, lands. Uh, if you need to stake your NFTs, you got NFTs. They're they're growing by the day. Uh, good staking uh, platform. Or by Nora, she's continually doing giveaways and um, and sales on original one of kind oil paintings partnered by number one NFTs. Uh, Carta Station. Carta Station, you know, it's the first uh, playable metaverse on Cardano. We got some cheese NFTs that we've made. You can check them out on our plots. Uh, Magic Square NFT, uh, great logo and uh, branding and all kinds of web design and this and that. And again, like I said, Card Carta Station, they've got some really cool stuff going on. Check them out. All right, look, y'all are beautiful, and I will uh, see you next time.